protect your gates. That is the name of this message that I'm going to deliver to you all today. I want to talk about protecting your gates because today there are so many ways for spirits to enter one's household, for spirits to enter one's mind, for spirits to enter into one's heart. And we have to be so mindful of the many portals, of the many gates that spirits may use. And not I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about evil spirits, what they may use to come into your life, to influence you. We have to be so careful. So today, when I'm talking about protect your gates, I'm talking about protecting your eyes, protecting your ears, protecting your heart, even protecting your mouth. What goes in? What comes out? out. What are you allowing to come into your body? What are you allowing to come through the TV? What are you allowing to come through your phone? It is so important that we protect our gates. So before we get into this message, let's go ahead and pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Protecting your gates. The scripture that I want to use today that I want to start off with is Matthew chapter 6 verses 22 through 23. Again, that is Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 through 23. And it says, your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. Now, we may read that. And we may go, well, Cameron, what does I represent here? What what did Jesus mean when he said our eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body? You think about it. There's a light that I have pointing at me right now. My eyes, the inside of my body right now, whether you want to believe it or not, it's it, there's a little bit of light in it from this light that is projecting into my eyes. But it's not talking about a physical light. This is talking about spiritual. What do your eyes see? What do your eyes watch? I'm even going a little bit further. What do your ears listen to? What does your mouth speak? You've got to protect your gates because if your eyes are always watching dark things, if your eyes are always looking at evil things, we live in a time where so many people love to look at horror movies. We live in a day and age where teenagers are being exposed to pornography at a younger and younger age. There was just a survey that was just taken that said the majority of young people admit that they that they were exposed to pornography by the age of 13. By the age of 13, meaning so many young people were exposed to pornography before then. So I want to take it a step further. What does I translate into when Jesus said your eye is like a lamp? So Eyes can translate into the of, of the mind, the faculty of knowing, because once you see something, you're now aware of it. Your mind is aware of it. Once you hear something, you're aware of it. Your mind is aware of it. This is why I tell people, you know, when I was younger and when I was a teenager, I was exposed to pornography. Those images, we have to be so careful because those images get into your mind. Sometimes you won't even be thinking about it. You could be doing something totally random, nothing related to sex to, to sexual things, and you'll have these por- pornographic images come into your mind. This is why it's so important that people protect their gates, that the body of Christ, we have to protect our gates. Our eyes should be focused on the things of heaven. Our ears should be focused on the word of God. Our mouth should only speak life. If you are not protecting your gates, I want you to think about what is coming into your heart. What is your heart being filled with? We live in a time where so many people, you know, you got Instagram, you got Facebook, you got Snapchat, you got 
TikTok, you got all of these social media websites and people are looking at so many inappropriate images. They're looking at inappropriate things. They're listening to inappropriate songs. Our society is not protecting its gates. And I want to encourage the people of God today to protect your gates. Protect your gates. Gates, you've got to be mindful of what you're looking at. You've got to be mindful of what you're listening to. I want to take you to to Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. It says, you must not cover your neighbor's eyes. You must not cover your neighbor, your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey or anything else. That belongs to your neighbor. What does that mean? We shouldn't covet anything that our friends have. We shouldn't covet anything that our family may have. We shouldn't covet what our bosses have. We shouldn't covet what our leaders have. We shouldn't covet anything that anyone else has. We must be pleased with what God has given us, with what God has blessed us with. And that's why I say it is so dangerous. Social media can be so dangerous. The movies we watch today can can be so dangerous because people see the good side. They see the facade. They see the filters of people's lives, but they don't see the truth. They don't even know the truth. You have people who post videos, who post pictures, making people think that they're rich when really they are poor. They're making people think that they're happy when really they are depressed. They're making people think their life is what everyone else should want when really they are only showing off what they wish they had. We've got to protect our gates. You listen to these songs today. These musicians, they're rapping about sex. They're rapping about drugs. They're rapping about how they want to sleep with this woman, sleep with that man. They're, 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 they're singing these country songs. They're singing depressing things. They're talking about divorce. They're talking about how they left their mom, how they left their dad, how they were on, how they were addicted to alcohol, how they battled all of these things. We've got to protect our gates. The movies today. You have so many marriages who compare their sexual relationships, husband and wives comparing their sex lives to what they see in movies. When we all know how the sex goes on in movies is not how it is in real life. We shouldn't covet what we see on TV. We shouldn't covet what we hear in the movies or in the songs. We shouldn't covet what we see on social media. We've got to be so very careful. This is why my wife and I, we don't even like to look at movies. If we're looking at a movie, let's say there's a sex scene in it. We fast forward through it. Or we'll get up and do something else if we're unable to fast forward through it at that moment. We don't even look at it because, guys, you've got to remember those images. Once you've seen that woman naked. Some people go, Cameron, all they showed was her breast. That is how Satan has desensitized this society today. If you go 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, did you know that a woman showing her leg, a woman showing her leg was considered sexual? A woman showing her leg was considered pornography. And now today we have these music videos. We have these movies where they're showing the woman's breasts. They're showing the woman's booty. And all they're really not revealing is the woman's vagina. And I wouldn't be shocked if we get to that day where they say, you know what? It's a part of the woman's body. It's no big deal. But ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to remind you all today, protect your gates because if it comes through your eyes if it comes through your ears it's going to get into your mind it will get into your heart whatever comes out of your mouth jesus said it reveals what's in your heart protect your gates we scroll we scroll through instagram people scroll through instagram all day double tapping We live in a society today, our generation, they feel like they're nobody. They feel like they're not worth anything. They feel like people don't care about them. You have so many young women today who feel like they're ugly because men are not double tapping. They're not pressing the heart button on social media. So when you have a woman who is covered up, who's really beautiful, she feels like she's not sexy. She feels like she's not loved. She feels like she's not attractive because men aren't saying, oh, look how sexy you are. Men aren't commenting about her body. 
Men aren't saying just how 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 sexy her breasts or how her booty is. Hey, I want to remind every young woman today: if you got to show your breasts for a man to look at you, if you got to show your booty for a man to look at you, you're not entertaining men. You're entertaining boys. Protect your gates. Protect your gates. You don't need to show off everything to impress people. You don't need to put on these filters to to, to make people think that it's all good in your life. Do you know that you're a child of God? Do you know that God loves you, that God cherishes you? We judge people on the things based on the worldly things, based on their position, based on their degrees, based on on how much money they have, on the clothes they wear, the shoes they wear. I hear people in the church today, if you're not wearing some type of designer clothes, they look at you as poor. They look at you as worthless. They don't see you as blessed. That is not what Christ would say. Do you think Jesus was walking around with designer clothes? If Jesus was here today, he would not be walking around in designer clothes. And I'm saying if he was walking around in the flesh, he would not be walking around in designer clothes. We've got to protect our gates. We've got to stop coveting after the things that other people have. If God has called one person to have this, God bless them. If he's called another person to have that, God bless them. If he's called if he's called me to have the minimal, I am blessed. You must realize that you are blessed. But if you don't protect your gates, if you don't protect your gates, if you don't protect your gates. Your heart will be deceived into thinking that God doesn't love you. Your heart will be deceived into thinking that God hasn't provided for you. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to protect your gates. We are not to covet when our eyes are healthy. And I'm not talking about having a 2020 vision. I'm not talking about wearing glasses so that you can see. I'm not talking about putting on some contacts. I'm talking about your spiritual vision. You know your eyes are healthy when you recognize how blessed you are. It doesn't matter what people are posting on social media. It doesn't matter what car your neighbor drives. It doesn't matter uh, the wife that your neighbor has. It doesn't matter the husband that your neighbor has. It doesn't matter how beautiful their family may look. It doesn't matter the job they may have. It doesn't matter about the home that they may have. Your eyes are, you know, your spiritual eyes are healthy when you say, you know what? They're blessed and I'm blessed. I may not have everything they have. I may not drive the vehicle they drive. I may not have the amount of money that they have, but I know I'm blessed. I may not be big and strong like that man is. I may not have the muscles that he has, but I know that I'm blessed. I know that I'm strong because God is in me. You've got to protect your gates, people. Protect your gates. I want to ask you today, are your eyes healthy? Are your spiritual eyes healthy? Some people today, you need to ask God to put some spiritual eye drops in your eyes. You got to ask God to put some spiritual eye drops in your eyes because so many people are blind today. So many people's spiritual eyes are dried out because they're too busy. They're too busy coveting after the things of this world. I want you all to think about the song of from the Prince of Egypt. Look through heaven's eyes. I was watching this movie with my son the other day. It's one of my favorite childhood movies. Um, my wife knows I still watch it sometimes to this day. And I know you have critics who will say, hey, you know, they didn't do everything. You know, the way that some things went, it wasn't exactly how it went in the Bible. I get it. But it was a biblical children's t- TV or a biblical children's movie. Um, it was a great movie overall. So it's innocent. I like it. If, you have, if you've never seen it, you should see it. But I want to read... Uh, Some lyrics from the song, Look Through Heaven's Eyes. And in this song, literally what it's telling us is that we should look at our lives as heaven sees it. We should look at our lives as God sees it. We say we're not blessed. God says you are blessed. You have food on the table. You have a roof over your head. You got heat running through your house. You're blessed. You have clothes on your back. You're blessed. You're saying you're not blessed because you're not wearing um, some designer shoes. Because you're not wearing a designer hoodie. 
well, you're not blessed to the world standards, but in my eyes, you're blessed. I'm the one that gives and take. And I gave you what you have, meaning you're blessed. So I want to read these lyrics to you all. Just check this out. So how can you see what your life is worth or where your value lies? You can never see through the eyes of man. You must look at your life through heaven's eyes. And to no one lost sheep, a shepherd boy is greater than the richest king. If a man lose everything he owns, has he truly lost his worth? Or is the new beginning of new and brighter birth? So how do you measure the worth of a man? And wealth or strength or size? And how much he gained or how much he gave? The answer will come to him who tries to look at his life through heaven's eyes. So I want to ask you all these questions. How can you see what your life is worth? How do you see what your life is worth? How do you measure the worth of your life? If a man loses everything he owns, if you lost everything that you own, have you truly lost your worth? Or is everything that you lost the beginning of a new and brighter birth? I'm just repeating the questions that the song asked here. How do you measure the worth of a man? And wealth and strength or size? And how much he gained or how much he gave? When you look through the eyes of man, their worth, you measure their worth based on the things that they have. You measure their works based on the amount of money that they gave. You measure their worth based on the clothes that they wear. You measure their worth based on how big they are, how much weight they can lift. But when you look through heaven's eyes, you see how blessed one is. When you look through heaven's eyes, one may look small on the outside, but you know what? You see spiritually, no, that's a strong person. That's a strong man of God. That's a strong woman of God. When you look through heaven's eyes and you see that someone may not have as much as the person next to you, you say, you know what? They have more than me. Here it is. I get I become worried and I get stressed and I get anxious and everything. And I stress over this bill and that bill. And I wish I had this car and I wish I had this house. But this person next to me, they're content with what they have. If I'm looking through heaven's eyes, I see that this person is blessed. They are indeed blessed. The purpose of this message is I want to encourage you all. Number one, to protect your gates. But number two, look at your life through heaven's eyes. Look at the life of someone else through heaven's eyes. Because when we come before God, he's not going to say, hey, were you wearing designer clothes? When we come before God, he's not going to ask, hey, angel, uh, Michael, Gabriel, can you bring me a receipt? I want to see how much this person gave. I want to total up the amount of money they gave because one is all about the heart. Because if I'm being real, some people just give for a tax write off to write it off later on on their taxes. Look at your life. Look at the lives of others through heaven's eyes. Last but not least. Just three things that are dangerous here. I want you all to walk away with this today. Three things that are dangerous. Social media is dangerous. If social media controls you, if social media influence you, it's dangerous. And it can be dangerous. It's dangerous to anyone. I have to be mindful of how much I'm on social media. I really just get on there to post an encouraging word and then usually I like to get off. What you see on TV can be dangerous. Horror movies are not of God. You got to ask yourself, when people stand up at these award shows, when when you hear these producers and these directors say, you know, God gave me this creative idea to give this to, 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 to write this movie, to write the script, to do this film on these evil things, on these spirits, on these demons, on these monsters chewing at the flesh of man. You've got to ask yourself, is that really of God? Because I know God did not give nobody that image. 
It's one thing if a movie is being done over hell. And it's trying, you know, a producer or director is trying to show you the torments of hell. They're trying to show you that, hey, hell is real and it's a place that you don't want to be. That's one thing. But I'm talking about some of these movies that come out today. All these horror movies today. And I'm guilty. When I was a teenager, I used to look at them. But my wife, you know, my wife and I don't look at them anymore because we are so big on protecting our gates. So many people don't even realize fear is released into their home through some of the movies that they watch. Last but not least, what we allow our ears to listen to can be dangerous. What we allow our ears to listen to can be dangerous. What's playing in your AirPods? What's playing through your Beats? What are you listening to on a daily basis? What are you listening to? I like, I love to listen to gospel music. My wife knows I also love to listen to classical music. It's a little violin music, you know, some of the background music they play in uh, movies. I like to listen to that as I'm working out. But you got to ask yourself, what's playing in your ears? What are you allowing your spirit man to be filled up with? Protect your gates. Because what you allow to enter may not want to leave as easily as it came in. God bless you all. I pray this message has encouraged you to protect your gates.